All right, I think my microphone's a bit better now. I usually have very low volume this time. It's it's a lot louder, I believe. So let's get into it. Now, I'm doing a, mar a video pre-market here in three hours and the market opens. All right, I don't usually like doing this, but I really want to do a video yesterday, but I fell asleep. Contradiction in enthusiasm. Nevertheless, let's cover the market. So S&P closed at high of day. All of them did. Very big green day, 1.5% on average. Took out resistance here on the S&P, NASDAQ. Didn't yet get to resistance, but, you know, wouldn't expect it to do that, even though pre-market were red. Dow Jones, very strong, bit like the S&P, but still not reaching that high resistance. I can't believe we've rallied this much. Russell, look at that, still weak, still weak. You know, I mean, it still was up almost 1.5%, but you can see how it's going to fail at resistance. I mean, I have that. I have that sentiment, you know, look at that, it's just going to fail. So uh, again, for me, the Russell and the banking stocks are the weakest links. The other three main indices, the S&P, the NASDAQ and the Dow, just outperforming still. So I totally don't agree with that, but respect the price action. Don't get in the way of a train that's going to destroy you. The VIX, though, I mean, look at this, really yeah, the banking crisis is not just over, but better now than before it started. Who believes that? Let's look at the uh, the financials. XLF makes sense. Closed at high of day with the markets, but you know, still very weak. You know, this is ascending. Ascending is the the weakest chart pattern. So I don't even want to draw it really. I mean, it's just going to take one or two days to breach this ascending, and then down we go again. I don't trust this rally at all. Uh, a lot less the Russell and the banking stocks. Now the XLF is the senior banking stocks. The KPE is the senior one also. But look at that. Didn't even break out of the descending. The descending is the strongest, right? Unlike the ascending being the weakest, the descending is the strongest, like the easiest one to break out of and to rally a bit. The type of chart pattern I would buy, especially if you break out of it. And despite the markets going up, 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 look at that. Still hasn't closed above it. I mean, almost, but still. And let's look at the KRE, you know, even lower, but pretty much at the same area, just closing just underneath or at the descending, which for me does not indicate a breakout. So for me, same story, different day. In this case, the markets went up, but the banking stocks and the Russell remain the weakest ones. Keep watching those as an indication of what the market's going to do. And I really reckon they're just going to go down. We're going to go to new lows. I think a bank can go bankrupt any moment could even be a medium or a bigger one. So market's very nice. One thing, I'm just going to jump ahead here. The gold, silver, they've been stealing the show, plus they're the ones I focus on mainly. They've been going up despite the markets going up. So they go up when the markets go down, totally inversely correlated. So when the markets go down, they just go higher, higher, totally opposite. Uh, but then the markets go up, they go up too. That's what I was talking about like weeks ago now, I think, uh, where it was just the invincibility trade. Markets go up, they go up. Markets go down, they go up. Obviously, you'll have little moments where they go sideways down, but you zoom out, you do a 5, 10, 15, one-day chart. It's just going up. Anyway, that's a different topic. So that's the general markets. Let's look at interest rates very quickly. All right, one year, screamed higher. Pretty strong, actually, you know, closed above resistance. You can still see we, we ventured higher than that before but it's really about the close. So this is a pretty strong close on the one year. Let's see how high. Now the one year, you know, we're nearing 5% there yesterday. You know, we pretty much touched 5%, tagged and closed back down at 4.8. But um, sorry, what am I talking about the day before? But today, look what we're doing. So yesterday, sorry about that. Yesterday, we uh, we still closed below, but today we're, we're breaking higher. The two year though, still within that descending chart pattern, five year today and, yes and yesterday. You know, same thing, we're just within that descending, so that's a lot easier. Ooh, 30 year is about to break out of the descending. But other than the 30 year, which is interesting, the one year, and I've said this, the one year is a little anomaly, This um, and probably the six month and all that, but the two year down, yeah, they're all sort of acting in tandem. The 30 year just breaking out slowly, I would say, but the one year is, um, that's quite a statement today, actually, it's quite interesting. You don't usually see that type of a divergence. Something to keep an eye on. But rates, a little less important than they were a few weeks ago as they were climbing all together when the banking crisis had not yet erupted. All right, let's look at the dollar. Dollar, my God. 
went back down again. I thought maybe a small bounce, but back down, straight away back down again. These moves are happening quicker than I expected, but at least generally in the same direction. But now, normally I would say, yeah, you expect a bit of support. And I did say yesterday, a bit of support, at least at 100.8 or 101. To be honest, the way things are going, I wouldn't expect it to just immediately go lower because it's like everyone's in a hurry to just get on with a pattern that they know is coming. But still, I, yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we maybe we go a little below, everyone freaks out, and then it rallies and closes at 100.8, just pretty much around the same low back here on the 2nd of February. So I don't have to guess all the time, do I? Let's just see what happens. But I reckon, I reckon it can't immediately today smash below and just close at 100. You know, I'd expect it to sort of hover around where it is. Obviously, anything can happen. Let's see what happens. But I'll tell you what, the way the dollar is going, I mean, if the dollar moves down, gold and silver go up. Commodities, I would say also, but not not as um not as 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 much as gold and silver. So let's see. But definitely when the dollar takes a dive, gold and silver go up and, and vice versa. If it starts to rally a bit, gold and silver get a bit suppressed. So here we're at low of day and also low of area. So let's see, let's see how gold and silver react during the day. Uh, we don't have too much news, but I think we have retail sales that'll definitely move it. But here, this is the last stand. I mean, after this, we have 100, which is a psychological number, but not really a technical support zone, really, not really at all. So you might have a one day stop off there, but I think the next day or even that very day, a close $99 handle. I mean, that's psychologically, the, the, the systems will probably go crazy. And then you just have this massive retracement and then it just becomes this huge pop and drop. And gold and silver will react the other way. Let's look at commodities. This is really stealing the show. Start with copper. Uh, I need to get rid of this, but that's essentially what's happening. So yeah, we have our close above the descending. Now we rally up. That's great. I mean, I could I could tell copper wanted to do it because this chart pattern, again, the descending is the, for me, the most bullish pattern to buy into. Here it tried and failed. You had these sort of, I don't know if you want to call them false signals, but there was no evident close above the descending. So it said, okay, you try once, twice, three, four, five, five. No, okay, then you deserve to go lower. You're not ready for it yet. Rallies again. Pretty strong rally, and then bam, yesterday, closed above it today, continuing, you know. Let's see if the dollar bounces, if it takes copper down. Is maybe copper moving up with the markets, right? It usually does. Or is it just going up because it's got to catch up with gold and silver and just generally commodities, especially oil. Um, but it's more of a metal follower than a, an oil follower. Natural gas. This is really, I mean... You know, it's been too long down here. The bounce was weak. It just feels like, like I said, with copper, it's it's not, well, it's a different chart pattern to copper, but it's not ready for that bounce yet. So I think people will say, look, people, you know, uh, shorts will get enthused, uh, enthused by this chart pattern. They'll think, okay, it's time to go down. You know, imagine flip this chart upside down. What would it look like? It's like it's bouncing its head on the resistance, ready to go higher. But here's the other way around, right? It's it's smashing its feet against the floor, ready to go through it. So I wouldn't be surprised if it goes lower. Anything can happen, blah, blah, blah. You can have a fake drop and then a strong candle, a strong hammer, and that would be a real strong bottom reversal candle. So let the candle do its job. Here, we're just dragging along the seabed, but it's not bullish. You know, it's too long at the bottom, too weak a bounce, too many big red candles. The only thing really bullish is how much it's already been destroyed. I bought this zone. You've got to have a strategy because anything can happen. You've got to learn to, to trust the candles and and respect the two possible scenarios. So one scenario is that it goes up and I'd be happy holding what I've got. And if it goes down, I'd be happy buying more because I bought two out of five tranches. So obviously I'd want more. And uh, I've got a lot of sidelines, especially the, the trimming I've been doing in the miners. Got a lot of sidelines, so I really don't mind buying. I mean, imagine selling silver and gold and the miners, how much they've gone up, and then buying natural gas-related assets, seeing how low they are. So it's all about respective value. So let's see what happens with natural gas. Oil, very strong on this ascending long term. That was nice. Kept on going. 
went back to the old zone and when i thought maybe it would have resistance we had this uh, supply cut so that just stormed it up and became very technically strong hovered around the highs bull flagging around 80 and then boom two strong candles now we're going sideways at the next final resistance above it so i don't see why this can't just sideways up again i still think we're going to 93 ish so yeah you could have a little drop retest here but generally i think we're going up you know if you're in oil then unless you need the money straight away just hold it uranium this one you know it's really confused for me it's it's mm, what it had to do is do what it did yesterday a strong candle and say look i'm ready to break out of this zone it's not the straightest line but you know what i mean this zone here close above it maybe some sideways and then back up to this level and by then maybe we start hitting our head on this descending line so you had to do that because if it did not do this candle yesterday it would start going back down here and that would be very weak that would be like triple quadruple bottom flush sort of pattern and that that's just begging to be taken out of its misery and break this line and a lot of uranium miners are actually underperforming this uh and and they're basically ready to flush some have already started to flush so imagine you had this global uranium etf flushing then the the miners would really uh, accelerate to the downside so this was a lifeline let's see if we can close above this level i actually wanted to fail because i'm one of those people who missed the train and i think i should be even buying now but you know i'm having so much fun in gold and silver that I don't want to be chasing anything. I'll let this flush. If it does, then I'll I'll buy that. If it doesn't, then I'll buy a retest. If I even feel like it. I'm just, I don't need to chase anything anymore. Gold and silver. Yeah. Just more upside. Obviously, we've got the dollar back at its lows. But, um, you know, pretty strong yesterday. Yesterday was a very strong day. I enjoyed that because I chased the day before. I never do that. I mean, I chased, I remember I... I think I said back here, I was like, yeah, I think gold is is doing something that can that can last. I'm going to chase. And I thought I was chasing here. I don't know if it's 1860. I don't think it was higher. I think, yeah, I think it was on this day here, on that Friday or just on the Monday or Thursday, or whatever. It was around here. I thought this, this is going to go higher. This is a strong candle. We're reacting very well to the banking crisis. I think the banking crisis then. Yeah, I think it was. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to chase here and then look how much we've gone, you know, from 18, let's say 60 to 2060. That's a $200 move. And I actually chased again. Um, it wasn't yesterday. It was the day before, the day before that, which was good, you know, up like 10% on the miners that I bought. Um, yesterday, I trimmed the smallest amount. It's like the last chasing I did, I took a third off that. I just thought, yeah, okay, that was a nice 5 to 10%. Let's take a little bit off just because the dollar is where it is. And because we're so high, I'm not used to chasing up here. So I thought I got a bit lucky. But I feel like a lot of people all over Twitter that this is going to last. This is the real thing. Famous last words before you get destroyed, a nice flush of the ascending. But it's just, it's too strong for too long. You know, it's a lot of candles here above 2,000. You know, it's not like before, it was one or two days, euphoria, and then just smash. Now, and fundamentally, you know, you know what's happening. You know the geopolitics. I mean, the war is worse now than it was at the beginning. Um, the, the the chance of rate increases is less. The, ch the chance of rate decrease, the chance of QE is more. The, the everything, regulations, taxes, just societal collapse all that beautiful stuff is just worse now than it was back then and yeah i mean silver still outperforming gold look at it today again yesterday also just a little bit though that's bullish so and look at it now it's it's at resistance i thought 26 was was a nice target we touched it yesterday close below it now we've gone actually higher than yesterday's high we're there. We're at 26.02 right now. Obviously, think about where the dollar is, right? If the dollar reverses and makes a nice uh, candle, then this could be the top. So you've got to think about not what the candle looks like now, but what it could look like 
by the close if things turn. But at the moment, things look good. So, you know, I still am thinking about trimming, just trimming still. I, basically, I'll, I'll tell you this. I used to have a minimum amount of value in miners. I've upped that to a medium amount. So if I trim, the miners will be worth, like before my light was 4K, $4,000. Now it's 5000 you know, so I still want them to be worth 5000 up here. Normally, I'd, it'd be the opposite. Normally, I'd trim them even more. And I'd say instead of 4K, they're worth 3K now because we've gone up so much. But this move feels so different. What I don't like about this move, though, is how ridiculous it's been. This is so steep, and um, which is why I'm trimming. I, You know, I may decide to change my mind during the day here. If I start to see, for example, gold and silver look weak, and before the dollar gains strength, and I start to see the dollar gain strength, for me, it would indicate, yeah, no, we're, we're ready for a bit of a flush here. What I will say, though, is if we flush, support has gone up. You know, for me, support, I was drawing all these lines. I delete these lines. Man, this is ridiculous. I mean, yeah, they could, if they come, you're not going to have a day where silver goes down from 26 to 23. You know, it's going to go from 26 to 24.5, maybe. That day is possible, look, one of these days. But I'll draw those lines when we get there. Uh, for now, these two will suffice. But the thing is, in the back of my mind, I am thinking, yeah, this is crazy. I never buy this. I did buy it here-ish, right, on the gold. I did buy it yesterday, sort of here-ish on silver. Not yesterday, but a few days ago on silver. I chased it also for this move which has happened. So whether I sell a little bit or whether I sell a bit more, I don't know. I need to see. But, you know, I'm looking at gold here. Red, while silver's up almost a percent, that tells me something. I know that's bullish because silver's outperforming gold, but gold not even being green with the dollar being at its lows. Think about it, right? Let's go to the three-minute chart, my favorite chart. I mean, any, anything can happen, right? Let's just see what there is. You know, imagine we start to flush this, then we bounce here. The bounce will be weak, probably won't even take, probably won't go back above this ascending. Then we flush and then, yeah, by uh, I'll be keeping my miners and gold and silver will be going green a lot more. That's cool. But what if we hold this and start to take out 101? You know, then we start to look, oh, is this a bottom? Okay, let's see, maybe we can... Yeah, let's just draw this. That'll do for now, right? We take this out, start to test 101, and then move higher. Then I'm, And then you start to see gold down 1%. Then I'll think, ooh, this is all going to get destroyed here for one or two days. And maybe that's the top in gold and silver, and then we come back down. And obviously, like I said, we're not going to come back down too much, right? All these zones, I'm going to delete them. It's disrespectful to the metals move. You know, if we come back down, yeah, we test the 1940, uh, sorry, 1980 zone we did before, we probably bounce. If we go lower, then it looks like a head and shoulders, and then I'll start drawing lines just in case. But for me, no need to consider anything lower than this for now. So uh, that's a long way of saying I am very nimble here. I've bought quite a bit. The value is pretty high. I also bought very recently, and I don't want to lose that profit. I already trimmed a little bit yesterday, but I feel like Honestly, I feel like closing everything I bought two or three days ago just to lock that in and then and then see what happens. Let's look at the miners because that's actually what I'm trading. So pre-market, apparently it's basically unchanged. Now, this is actually easier to read than gold and silver. Obviously, everything is based off gold and silver. But first of all, what a nice day yesterday, 3% up pretty much. The GDX, though, has reached its resistance. This, I remember now, is one of the reasons I was trimming I was looking at gold and silver thinking, yeah, silver's at 26. But the GDX has touched this zone. This is a zone. This is an obvious zone. Yeah, we have a gap up here. Who cares? This is this failed to break above several times when we were here. So for me, this is an important zone, more so than this gap. Which, by the way, we could close and still close below this, this 36. So, you know, let's see what happens. But we are at resistance on GDX. If we go back down... Very obvious support. It's 33 point, whatever you want to call it, 6.5, even 34. So that's your first zone. We'll see what that equates to in gold when the day comes. 
GDXJ, though, still hasn't touched its equivalent, which would be 44.5. So let's see if today, especially with Silver's help, we have a little bit, you know, we could have GDX retesting this zone, sort of trying to open this gap or close this gap, rather. And then you have the GDXJ finally tagging this. And for me, that would be like, all right, that's kind of the next level achieved, even though it might be 2 or 3% only. But I just feel like this descending is, again, okay, GDX, it's not as obvious, actually, because it would just be all the way up here. It's not going to work. It's way too far away. Sorry, I don't know why I didn't have that drawn in. But I don't think it counts as much. Yeah, no, forget it. That's way too far. That's like a whole new level. But GDXJ, you know, for me, this is enticing to try and play resistance over here, but it's too much. I feel like you could have a top today or tomorrow. The only thing is gold is so close to touching its resistance here of 2070. So the thing is, we're so close to these resistance points that people, you know, traders may just miss it and then it starts making this descent. So I'm ready to sell today. That's the truth. I'm, I, I want to see how the dollar reacts here at the absolute lows. If it starts to act weaker, I'll I'll leave some on and try and get a bit more. But I feel like trimming at least what I bought. Yeah. Anyway, you can see my resistance and support zones. The amount I'm going to sell, I'm really going to determine intraday. You know, I'm not going to say, oh, I said on the video, I'm going to sell uh, everything that I bought two days ago. So I have to do it. I, I'm going to stay nimble. But you can see my support and resistance, rather resistance uh, zones. But uh, I'm also taking into account not just gold and silver and the GDX and GDXJ lines, but also the dollar. I don't know how much the markets will play a role because, like I said, when the markets go up, we seem to be up. When the markets go down, we seem to go up, So, which is cool. I finished with Bitcoin, and I did buy some Hive several days ago, which I really, really do not regret because that just, I don't know how much that's gone up. Uh, wow, well, whatever. They've all gone up. I'll go through the miners real quick, but look at Bitcoin. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, 30,000 is a resistance level. Not really. Kind of went straight through that like it wasn't really there. In fact, we did. So for me, the next resistance is 32,500-ish. Why do I say that? It's not just, you can also see it here, actually. You know what I mean? Here, support there. Or you could say also 30, hmm. 4,000, it doesn't really matter for me. It never really got above this zone, 32,000. It's a zone, there's not one line, it's a bit of a zone. I'd say from 32,000 to, wow, 34,000. Sounds a lot because of the number, but it's not that big. It's just this entire zone. But, you know, we're reaching an area where it never went higher this, since it flushed. So this is kind of important. I think the bottom is in. In Bitcoin, bit late to say it, right? Because we were hit 15,000 just above. And we've basically done a 100% move. So for me, and it reminds me, it reminds me of when Bitcoin was here. I remember this period. Look at this descending here. I can't believe I didn't plan to go through Bitcoin like this, but look at this period here. I remember this. You know, it was very, it was destroyed. Our oh, Bitcoin's going to zero. And then it went sideways. And then there was this, look at this technical beauty. This pump, was it on news? I don't remember. Probably not. This is pure technical. This is beautiful. This is ideal technical. And again, the descending is my favorite. I didn't play it, right? I didn't, did I? No, I didn't. I don't think I did. I was in the hive, but I forgot whether I was in the hive later or before, actually. The point is, this breach, and it went all the way up. Beautiful. And then whatever happened, we all know. But that was like a quiet and a very stealthy breakout. And it reminds me, and no one said this, I don't think. And if they have, I didn't hear them. And it does, doesn't really matter. Reminds me of what happened here. Because I was watching this and thinking, oh, that's a breakout of the descending. But I didn't believe in Bitcoin. Because we were in the middle of the bear market. And it was like the worst asset going down worse than the NASDAQ, following the NASDAQ. But still, I remember thinking, huh, that reminds me of that 2018 um, period. And then it went up. I thought, oh, no, you know, I, I missed. But then we had this fail and flush. And this was me, a bit like uranium now, thinking, yes, excellent. I'm going to get it lower. And then you had the banking crisis. I think that was the banking crisis where we just went 
screaming up. And I thought, okay, well, that's just the banking crisis. The technical damage is kind of done. But when we went all the way up here, I thought, oh, this is this is a bit different because it's now completely repaired its technical damage. And that's why I'm not surprised we didn't come down because we went sideways here for a long time. I was thinking, yeah, we've got to take out this 26,000 level to go back down again. But it still would be bullish if it came back down again. And now we've gone higher again. And now we're up 100%. And we're going to be testing this important 30,000. But we've kind of taken out a more important level, which I would say is 25,000. So um, does Bitcoin just all of a sudden slowly go all the way back up, just as it did after it took out this descending? I mean, it didn't do it straight away. We went back down again to get this flush. The only thing that can stop it is, in my opinion, a general market crash. But And I would love that because I want to buy in more. But uh, I'll tell you what, I made the decision a few days ago, thankfully before this breakout, to buy more of the miners. Uh, sorry, miners. I, I just added to my hive. I added a third extra here this day. I think it was three. Um, I forgot what it was. It wasn't here. It was the next day when it went higher. I think it was before the close, 338, 339. Before it took this out, I thought, nah, it's going higher because Bitcoin for me is going higher. And we did. We went higher. We went sideways. Now we went higher. And look at this pre-market. Wow, we're at 420. I think I've got my sell at 428 just to sell this zone. But I know it's going higher. It's just I always trade the individual technical chart. But yeah, why Hive? To be honest, the other miners are better the maras and the bit farms and all this riot is riot is out outperforming everyone um nb2 this is a german one which has come back from the ashes well because these will go up more look bitcoin's at thirty thousand. if it gets to sixty thousand, you know everyone's going to be celebrating that's amazing that's 100 percent. well hive only needs to get to eight to get to to do 100 percent. and to be honest it should be at eight now just to match where bitcoin is you know what I mean? So big, uh, high will be trading at 28 if Bitcoin's at 67,000. Sorry, I've seen it happen twice before. I was here during this period and I survived this period and I lasted up until this. I made very good money. It was the best money I made, actually better than the the miners, at least in an individual stock. I survived it, bought the dips, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And actually I didn't get taken out here. I'd sold a lot. And then on the way down, I hated selling here, but I saw a breakdown and I thought it was a bad at the at the time it was like a three dollar forty, but then they diluted, so it's changed. But I've traded the hive amazingly, and that's why I added to it a few days ago. And to be honest, I really think that if Bitcoin makes it, and I missed the train, you know, because I was waiting for the flush to ten thousand, like a few people, I was one of those. If I did miss that, then I'm buying hive, and if Bitcoin does go all the way to sixty seven thousand, I could probably retire just on this stock, you know. So, um, yeah, I didn't really intend to go into Bitcoin because gold and silver has been exciting enough, but that's that's the truth. You know, Bitcoin is also um, outperforming almost at the moment. Look at this, up 1.5%. Ethereum, by the way, look at this. You know, this is a total breakout here. I'm not following the altcoins. Maybe the alt season has begun, actually, because they're outperforming Bitcoin at the moment. Me, it's mainly Bitcoin and Ethereum. XRP is soon going to take out. Yeah, I mean, look, we're breaking out of some serious zones here. And it's not like the banking crisis is going to send Bitcoin down. It sent it up. So like gold, Bitcoin, gold, silver, we're all holding hands, you know, on this trampoline here. And we're all friends. Remember that. I know sometimes we, uh, Bitcoin's better, gold's better, gold is better. But we're all alternatives to the system and we're all making money whilst those big banks get destroyed which is a beautiful thing so yeah i'm going to cover i should definitely cover bitcoin and ethereum a bit more and plus i'm a little bit more neutral i feel you know you have a lot of bitcoin pumpers and all this and fair enough i'm a gold pumper but i'm a lot more neutral and objective i feel because i don't mind it going down because i want to buy more and i don't mind it going up because i have enough in it to make good money if we go all the way up and um, and I'm not as much as a, a philosophical diehard when it comes to Bitcoin.
so anyway i'll leave it there uh, let's see everything will probably change by the end of the close i just thought i'd do 